Nivyad itaratas charte suavigya swarat. Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikabaye Buyantiat Surayaha Tejo Vari Midam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Trisargo Mesha Nam Nasvena Sada Niras Takuhakam Satyam Param Di Mahi O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva, O all pervading personality of Godhead, uh, from my respectful obeisances unto you. <coughs> I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes, of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravo tra maramo nirmatsaranam satam vedyam vastavam atravastu Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shrimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimva Purir Ishwaraha. Sadyo Hidi Avarudyate Tra. Kriti Bihi Sususabhistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God-realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam falam sukumakad amrita dravya samyutam Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam Muhur Aho Raska Bhuvi Bhavukaha O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls, Shinvatam Swakita Krishna, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Kadiantak Stohi Badrani, Vidunoti Suhitsatam. 
to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best-wishing friend, and purifies a devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Bhagavati Uttama Sloke, Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajastamo bhava, Kamalu badayas chaye, Chita etaran avidam, Stitvam satve prasiddhiti. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso Bhagavat bhakti yogataha Bhagavat tattva vijnanam Mukta sanga shijayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure devotion. I'm sorry, pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse Number 49. Viduropi Paritya Prabhase Dehavatmana Krishna Vesena Tachita Sita Sita Priti Biswa Shayam Yayo Translation by Srila Prabhupada Vidura while on pilgrimage, left his body at Prabhasa because he was absorbed in thought of Krishna. He was received by the demigods of the Pitri Loka planet where he returned to his original post. Vidura, of course, is Yamaraj. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Kijay. The difference between the Pandavas and Vidura is that the Pandavas are eternal associates of the Lord, the personality of Godhead, whereas Vidura is one of the administrative demigods in charge of the Pitri local planet and known as Yamaraja. Men are afraid of Yamaraja because it is he only who awards punishment to the miscreants of the material world. But those who are devotees of the Lord have nothing to fear from him. To the devotees, he is a cordial friend, but to the non-devotees, he is fear personified. As we have already discussed, it is understood that Yamaraja was cursed by Manduka Muni to be degraded as a sudra, and therefore Vidura was an incarnation of Yamaraja. 
as an eternal servitor of the Lord, he displayed his devotional activities very ardently and lived the life of a pious man, so much so that a materialistic man like Dhritarashtra also got salvation by his instruction. So by his pious activities in the devotional service of the Lord, he was able to always remember the lotus feet of the Lord, and thus he became washed of all contamination of a sudra-born life. At the end, he was again received by the denizens of Pitraloka and posted in his original position. The demigods are also associates of the Lord without personal touch, whereas the direct associates of the Lord are in constant personal touch with him. The Lord and his personal associates incarnate in many universes without secession. The Lord remembers them all whereas the associates forget, due to their being very minute parts and parcels of the Lord. They are apt to forget such incidents due to being infinitesimal. This is corroborated in Bhagavad Gita 4.5. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So Vidura is a very, very interesting person. And he was uh, cursed uh, by Manduka Muni because when he was a child, he pierced an ant with a blade of grass and he killed him. And although he was uh, pious in many ways, uh, he was cursed to take birth as a sudra. So, uh, after that, it was the, the rules were changed a little bit that a child should not be punished until they're 14 years old because they don't really know what they're doing. They're not really trained. So, and also, brahmanas should never be punished uh, because, well, I mean, let's say real brahmanas should never be punished. And uh, so there, there are different rules in the Vedic tradition. Uh, in case of uh, Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada said, in Krishna consciousness, there's never punishment, only reward. It's a very interesting statement that he's made. And another time he said, in Krishna consciousness, uh, we are not like the karmis who kick people down. We're always kicking them up. So this is, these are very uh, nice points made by Prabhupada. And he demonstrated that in his own life and in his relationship with the devotees. So how do you kick someone up instead of down? And how do you reward rather than punish? That is the art of Krishna consciousness. And very few people understand it but in the life of Prabhupada we saw this is what he did now we can't imitate a Mahabhagava devotee but we can understand the principle and in other places Prabhupada has given other uh, important instructions to try and understand this transcendental nature of a devotee and he says, Advaista Sarvabhutana, Maitrakarana Evacha, Nirmama Nirahankara, Samadukha Sukam Shami, Santusta Satatam Yogi, Yatat Madhrita Nishchaya, Mayapta Mano Budir Yomad Bhakta Same Priya. He says, One who is not envious, but is a kind friend to all living entities, who does not think himself a proprietor and is free from false ego, who is equal in both happiness and distress, who is tolerant, always satisfied, self-controlled, and engaged in devotional service with determination, his mind and intelligence fixed on me. Such a devotee of mine is very dear to me. So if we want to be Same uh, Yukta Priya, uh, somebody, uh, he says, yeah, Yomad Bhakta 
Priya Same. Or you want to be dear to Krishna. This is the formula, 12th chapter, verses 12, uh, 13 and 14. So if you want to be dear to Krishna, listen carefully. Coming again to the point of pure devotional service, the Lord is describing the transcendental qualities of a pure devotee in these two verses. If you want to understand who's a pure devotee, you should understand these two verses. A pure devotee is never disturbed in any circumstances, nor is he envious of anyone, nor does a devotee become his enemy's enemy. He thinks, this person is acting as my enemy due to my own past misdeeds. So it is better to suffer than to protest. Now, have you ever heard anyone say this before? It's better to suffer than to protest. No. Because there are very few pure devotees in this world. And we were fortunate enough to meet Srila Prabhupada. You're fortunate enough to meet Srila Prabhupada because you meet him through his words and his instructions and his temples and the, the process of deity worship. And also through his purports. His purports, Prabhupada said, are his transcendental ecstasies. If you listen carefully to purports, you'll also become ecstatic. And if you just gloss over them, as most people do, you will be troubled throughout your whole life, even though you're chanting Hare Krishna, because you glossed over the purports. That's why I say, simply reading the verses is not enough. If you just simply hear the verses, okay, that's better than nothing, but it's not enough. Simply reading is not enough, but hearing from, from Srila Prabhupada himself or bona fide devotees, that is what makes the difference. Then things become amplified in the mind. <clears throat> I can remember classes I heard from devotees over 40 years ago, over 50 years ago, I can remember those classes, or at least one or two things that I got out of those classes. I remember things my first uh, teacher taught me, uh, Omapati Das. And I remember things he said, uh, even to today. See? Because the way he said it, and from his position of being a surrendered disciple of Srila Prabhupada at the time, it made an, a great difference. Uh, influence on me. And I've, I can remember other classes where I was listening and, and has made a difference in my life. So this hearing is very important, as we said the last couple of days. But in this statement, he says, it's better to suffer than protest. Have you ever heard anyone say that before? And are we ready to follow that? That's the question. Are we ready to follow that? Because in, in Hindi, people say, Badla, I got to get revenge. You know, this person's not going to get away with this. You know, I'm going to get that person. You know? <laughs> yeah, everyone's getting revenge in India, in America. Everyone's getting revenge. And, and, and the fighting doesn't stop. It just keeps going on. At some point, there has to be a pure devotee who's not interested in Badla, who's not interested in becoming his enemy's enemy. But there are certain circumstances where violence is necessary, as explained. Bhagavad Gita, right in the first chapter, and you should hear this. Let's see if I can find that verse. <clears throat> Prabhupada said there are six situations in which violence is necessary. Huh? 36, okay. And he says, according to the Vedic injunctions, there are six kinds of aggressors. One, a poison giver. Like Prahlad Maharaj's parents gave him poison. Mother and father, not just the father. He got the mother to give it to handle the plate of poison food. But of course, Prahlad first offered it to Krishna. Of course, his parents didn't offer it to Krishna. And he first offered it to Krishna, and then he respected it as Krishna Prashadam, and Krishna saved him. So when someone offers you some food, especially a demon, <clears throat> and if for some crazy reason you accept it, you should at least offer it to Krishna first, 
and hope that the Lord saves you from the poison. The poison is the mentality of the demon that prepared it. That's the poison. So when you accept food from unholy people, guess who else, who else gets unholy? You do. Because their consciousness is in that food. And when you accept Mahaprasadam, you get purified. Because the consciousness, hopefully, of the Brahmana who offered it and the Brahmana who cooked it uh, was focused on pleasing Krishna. So this offering prasadam is a great service. It's a great art because you're able, by the mercy of Krishna and Prabhupada, to transform something ordinary and material into something spiritual. It's say, this is the real alchemy. Alchemical research was done in the Middle Ages to transform mercury into gold. And of course it failed. But in India, they know how to do it, or they used to know how to do it. Yeah, because a pure Brahmana would swallow mercury and pee gold. Did you know that? Don't try it. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to go back uh, somewhere uh, after death. <laughs> but uh, that was, I mean, because your body is a chemical factory, but you have to know how to control it properly. So, a poison giver. Two, one who sets fire to the house. Three, one who attacks with deadly weapons. Four, one who plunders riches. Five, one who occupies another's land. And six, one who kidnaps a wife. So, when Vali was fighting with Sugriva, Lord Rama was, in a sense, hiding behind a tree. And when he saw the fight coming to a beginning, he drew his bow and arrow and aimed it at Vali. And Vali saw this and said, Hey, hey what's going on here? Why, why are you doing that? I'm not fighting with you. I have nothing against you, Lord Rama. I haven't done anything wrong to you. Just let me take care of my brother here. I'm going to beat the hell out of him. And then after that, I'll help you find Ravana. And Rama said, anybody who kidnaps another man's wife, I will kill him. And he shot the arrow and killed him. Well, he didn't die right away. And he realized he made a big mistake. And then he begged forgiveness of Lord Ram. And he begged him, you please take care of my son on God. And uh, make sure he's okay. And then he died. So, what did Rama say? Anybody who kidnaps somebody else's wife, I'll kill him. Because someone kidnapped his wife. Right? So it's a very, very serious uh, offense. So you have six positions, six points where violence is necessary. But in general, let's say somebody insults you. Who have they actually insulted? Huh? Yeah, the false ego. They haven't really <laughs> insulted you. They, they insulted something that's false, right? So uh, most people will say, oh, you insulted me. I'll never forgive you. I'm going to kill you or whatever. But in general, you have to understand, they haven't really insulted you. They just insulted your false ego, which is something false. It's not real. So you have no reason to get upset. Just like when they told Socrates, well, we're going to give you this poison, you're going to die. He said, ah, but you must catch me first. And what does that mean? He was in prison. What does he mean, you must catch me? But he was saying, basically, you might kill my body, but you're not going to kill my soul, because my soul is eternal, and you don't know how to catch me. See, I'm a free man, because I know I'm not this body. So, uh, this better to suffer than to protest. So if someone insults you, better to suffer than to protest. If someone cheats you, better to suffer than to protest. If someone uh, is uh, you think is taking advantage of you or is being mean to you, it's better to suffer than to protest. But if someone cheats Prabhupada or insults Prabhupada or 
tries to cheat the temple. So when then you can become like fire. But uh, in general, for yourself, it's better to suffer than to protest. Okay, so here we see that Madhira takes birth as a sudra. So, uh, so in his previous in, in his previous life, he was Yamaraj, but Yamaraj gave this punishment to Mundaka Muni. I'm sorry, I mis misspoke the uh, history. And Mundaka Muni, when he was a little kid, he pierced a uh, an ant with a with a blade, some type of uh, straw, and killed it. And uh, when he found out that you know. He, uh, Yamaraj did this to him. He cursed him to become a sudra. So he is born as Vidura from a uh, uh, a mother who's a sudra, and his father, of course, was uh, he was uh, uh, Vyasadeva. Yeah, Vyasadeva. So here uh, he's a sudra, but he becomes a pure devotee. So Prabhupada talks about this, but in a letter, and this is extremely important points. He says, because at one point, some of the devotees in our movement became contaminated by members of the Gaudiya Math, as well as some people that were not in the Gaudiya Math. They were, they were, they were like caste, those swamis. And uh, so Prabhupada writes a letter to a Chutananda in 1970. So you see this fiddling around with this gun started really early. And uh, he said, regarding the validity of the Brahminical status as we accept it, meaning we in ISKCON accept it, because in the present age there are no there is no observance of the Garbodan ceremony. Even a person born in Brahmana family is not considered a Brahmana. He is called Dvijabandhu, or unqualified son of a Brahmana. Under the circumstances, the conclusion is that the whole population is now Sudra, as it is stated, Kalo Sudra Sambhava. So for Sudras, there's no initiation according to the Vedic system, but according to the Pancharatrika system, Initiation is offered to a person who is inclined to take Krishna consciousness. This is an extremely important point. And you see, it was debatable even in the beginning of the movement, and some devotees got contaminated by outside sources. So now Prabhupada, now Prabhupada went at great length to straighten this out. So he says in this letter, During my Guru Maharaja's time, even a person was coming from a Brahmana family. He was initiated according to the Pranchara system, taking him to be a Sudra. Wow. <clears throat> so the birthright Brahmanism is not applicable at the present moment. The sacred thread inaugurated by my Guru Maharaja, according to Pancharatrika system and Hari Bhakti Vilasa by Srila Sanatan Goswami, must continue. It does not matter whether the priestly class accepts it or not. When my Guru Maharaj Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada introduced this system, it was protested even by his inner circle of God brothers or friends. Of course, he had actually no god brothers, but there were many disciples of Bhakti Minotakura who were considered as god brothers who protested against this action of my Guru Maharaj, but they didn't care for it. Well, what is he talking about? When Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur saw the condition of Brahmanas in, in around 19... 1910, 1915, 1918, right before he started the uh, Gaudiya Math, he saw that it was degraded. And they were claiming that they're transcendental, although they were behaving in a very low 
way. What's the low way? Become your enemy's enemy. Be envious. Fight. Get angry unnecessarily. All these symptoms were there. And even smoking ganja, things like that. They said, oh, we're Vaishnavas. We're born in the Nityananda Vams. And we can chant Hare Krishna very nicely. Therefore, we also smoke ganja. We also philander. We also uh, do all kinds of things. But uh, we're transcendental. So this was going on. So Bhakti Siddhanta, he sits down in front of a picture of Gorkishore Babaji and he takes sannyas initiation from him directly, although his guru had already passed away. This infuriated a lot of people, the caste Brahmins, and including other disciples of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and so forth. But he didn't care. Now let's hear the rest of this. When my Guru Maharaj Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasai Goswami Prabhupada introduced the system, it was protested even by his inner circle of God brothers or friends. Of course, he had actually no God brothers, but there were many disciples of Bhakti Vinodakura who were considered as God brothers who protested against this action of my Guru Maharaj, but he didn't care for it. Actually, one who takes to chanting Hare Krishna mantra offenselessly immediately becomes situated transcendentally and therefore he has no need of being initiated with sacred thread. Now this is also repeated by Prabhupada in the, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. He says this, it's not really necessary to take uh, Brahman initiation. But because people are so low born in this age, it's highly recommended. Because the holy name alone is enough to liberate someone. But because we are coming from very low class uh, origins, it's highly recommended to help us become actually transcendentally situated. <clears throat> so, but my Guru Maharaj introduced the sacred thread because a Vaishnava was being mistaken as belonging to the material caste. To accept a Vaishnava in material caste system is hellish consideration, naraki buddhi. So there's two things here. One is, on one side, some people who claim to be Vaishnavas, but these are people in the upper sampradayas, the, the fallen sampradayas or false sampradayas, like the Nityananda Vams and so forth. There's 13 uh, Sahaja uh, some pradayas, they're all not bona fide, but they claim to be descendants of Advaitacharya or this one or that one. And uh, they were acting abominably. And on the other side, there were the caste Brahmins who said that you, you have to be born a Brahmin to be a Brahmin. So in both sides, there were problems through the false sampradayas and through the false brahmanas, right? And that false idea that you have to be born a brahmana to be a brahmana is still going on today. It hasn't stopped, right? And the, and the uh, upper siddhanta uh, sampradayas are still going on also. It's still there. But Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasai Thakur had to put an end to it in order to make a pure movement of Vaishnavas. So, he introduced this sacred thread because a Vaishnava was being mistaken as belonging to material caste. To accept a Vaishnava in material caste system is hellish consideration, not a kibudi. Therefore, to save the general populace from being offender to a Vaishnava, he persistently introduced this sacred thread ceremony, and we must follow his footsteps. So the, the, the Vaishnavas in the false Sampradayas, they were not putting on a sacred thread. See? And because they said we're transcendental to the Varnas and Ashramas, we don't have to do it. And the caste Brahmanas, they would not give the sacred thread unless you were born in a Brahmana family. So <laughs> you see on both sides there were problems, serious problems that were holding back the pure execution of this Krishna consciousness. 
So now Prabhupada address, addresses uh, a specific instance. He said, regarding Dr. Sen's grandson's theory of species. You see, there's so many speculations in India. India is where speculation started from, and it's continuing. Right? If they are species, the species horse is a kind of species. It draws a cart. The ass is another kind of species. He carries load. So ass is never engaged for drawing a cart. If brahmanas are a species, and Vaishya and Sudra are other species, why do we see that sometimes a brahmana does a sudra's work? We have got many Negro disciples, and they are worshipping the deity. So why they should not worship the deity? Krishna says he accepts the service even of the Papa Yoni, those who have taken impious births. Now, this is, this is real philosophy now. And, Mamhi Pratavi Apasridya, Yebi Su Papa Yonaha, Striya Vaisas Tatasudras, Tepi Yanti Paramgatim. See, Tepi Yanti Paramgatim, even the lowest born person can attain the highest perfection of spiritual life when they come in contact with pure devotees. And, and they take instructions. So, so Prabhupada gives an extreme example. Is that you know there are many? Uh, uh, what does he say here? We have got many Negro disciples, and they are worshiping the deity. So why they should not worship the deity? I mean, this this was unheard of in India, where Africans could become brahmanas and worship the deity. Unheard of. But yet, Krishna says he accepts the service even from the Papa Yoni, those have taken impious births. So that verse in the ninth chapter, and it's a very important verse. Actually, Krishna does not say that caste is determined according to species. So here this person, Dr. Sen's grandson, had a theory that uh, the caste is determined by the species. So in other words, uh, see, again, this, this Vedic philosophy. Uh, in the uh, evolutionary theory of Darwin, all of humanity is one species. But according to the Vedas, the species is determined not by body, but by consciousness. So therefore, they would say, oh, Africans, they have a very low consciousness. They're all in the mode of ignorance. So they're, they're, that's a different species than uh, an Indian that's born in the Brahmin family. Okay. So <laughs> he came up, this grandson of Dr. Sen came up with this species theory. So Prabhupada says, actually, Krishna does not say that caste is determined according to species. Because species is, is this type of body, right? But according to the quality of work, the divisions of society are made. Narada says, one must be judged according to his qualification even if he is in a different class or species. Still, he should be accepted according to the qualities which he exhibits, that is, Brahmana, etc. Sridhar Swami says, birth is not so much important as quality. You have very wrongly remembered something about Sridhar Swami's view. So in other words, uh, Chittananda must have said something. That's, oh, well, Sridhar Swami uh, supports this idea of species. Uh, Prabhupada debunks it. Something about Sridhar Swami uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah. Not, not him. No, the, the original Sridhar. Yes. He might have said, I mean, Sridhar Maharaj might have said something. I doubt it, but he might have said something a bit. He was talking about Sridhar Swami. Is, uh, yeah. In Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said that if one is Vaishnava, immediately he becomes qualified for executing Vedic rites. About this verse, Srila Jiva Goswami remarks that the Brahmana awaits the sacred thread ceremony, but a Vaishnava is qualified to execute the Vedic rites without waiting for the sacred ceremony. Of course, we don't practice that in Krishna consciousness, but it is a fact. So, here Prabhupada gives evidence from Narada Muni, from Krishna himself, from Sridhar Swami and the Rudra Sampradaya, 
and from Srimad Bhagavatam and Jiva Goswami. In one little paragraph, he gives all this evidence to debunk Dr. Sen's grandson's theory <laughs> of species. So then he says, the real fact is that because of non-observance of the Garvodan Samskara, so that means before birth, before conception, a husband and wife should do certain things to become purified before the act of uh, conception. And he says in Kali Yuga, it's, it's virtually non-existent. What's interesting is <laughs> it was started somewhat in ISKCON. Uh, I remember in, in New Mayapur, uh, first of all, there was, a, there was definitely a culture of Krishna consciousness, a very strong culture of Krishna consciousness, especially in the early days. And disciples would not do anything unless they got the permission of their guru. And that's, Prabhupada says that also. You must first get your guru's permission before any act. So that included the act of procreation. So disciples would ask uh, their guru, uh, can we procreate? And if he said yes, then he would tell them how to do it. And that was, uh, in New Mayapur, there was a special trailer for procreation. And uh, husband and wife would go into the trailer after they chanted 64 rounds and fasted. And then when they were in the trailer, there was a big sankirtan party going on outside. <laughs> well, I'm not saying we should do that here, but uh, that was a little bit of an exaggeration. But the idea of chanting 64 rounds was there, definitely. And, and meditating and fasting and all that. It was definitely there. Okay. And they, take it, they take it to a ridiculous, uh, you know, the, the, the reproduction trailer at, the, at New Mayapur. <laughs> uh, anyway, the real fact is that because of non-observance of the Garvardhan samskara in this age, there are no real brahmanas by birth at all. And even they cannot be called uh, even they cannot be called Dvijabandha. Dvijabandha means the fallen son of a Brahmana. They cannot be called even Dvijabandha properly because there has been no such observance for a long time. That is, uh, uh, Garbhadhan Samskar. Kalo Sudra Sambhava. The claim of Brahmanism by birthright is a false display of material situation only. It is our duty, therefore, to train all kinds of men up to the standard of qualified brahmanas, initiating them as such by qualification. So when he says initiating, therefore, there's brahman initiation. So we do not, although it's true that the holy name does not need anything, you know, one does not need anything else but the holy name. Because of our low birth, initiation is required also in ISKCON before one can act as a brahmana. As such, by qualification in accordance with the above authorities, so that they may go on progressively unhindered in their march back to home, back to Godhead. This system introduced by my Guru Maharaj is a chance for all the members of the society, scientifically based and applied, apart from the exploitative sentiment of birthright caste system, to become actually situated on the transcendental platform. The literal meaning of the term Brahmana is one who is Brahmabhuta, or on the theoretical stage, notice he uses, he uses the word theoretical stage of Brahmagyan. Since it is that one progresses from the stage of Brahmagyan to the stage of knowledge of Paramatma, and then to knowledge of Bhagavan, one who has come to the first stage, Brahmagyan, is automatically Brahmana, fully qualified as such. So for a Vaishnava, who has come to the highest stage of knowing Bhagavan, naturally he has already established his qualification as a Brahmana. Hope this meets you in good health. You're everywhere, Wusha, Srila, uh, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. So you see, Prabhupada went to great lengths right early in the movement. This is like only four years after the start of the movement to erase all these misconceptions that entered into the movement. 
and and it got so serious that uh, uh, very sad to say that some devotees kept Prabhupada as a prisoner in his room in L.A., Los Angeles, and then eventually that stopped, and he gave those four errant devotees a sannyas and told them, "Now you're a sannyas, you must." Give up managing and just travel and preach. <laughs> so you see, there's no punishment. There's only reward. He didn't throw them out of the movement. He gave them sannyas and threw them on the road to preach. So that's another long story, but we won't go into that. So here we see this amazing letter. So Vidura is born a sudra, but he becomes a pure devotee. And he saves... His brother Dhritarashtra, we had the whole previous chapters all about Vidura saving his brother Dhritarashtra. And therefore that's why we do things a little differently in ISKCON than what they do maybe in other temples or other sampradayas. But there's a reason for it. Now you know what the reason is. This is a letter written in 1970 to Achyutananda, November 14th, 1970. Srila Prabhupada Kijay. Are there any questions anyone would like to ask? Okay, previously, I mean, it was of, uh, the curse of uh, Mandaka. Mundaka. Mundaka, sorry. Before that, there's Mundaka Muni and there's. Mandaka no, Mandaka, no, there's no clue. Mandak, uh, no, Mundaka Muni and there's uh, the guru of. Uh, of uh, 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 anyway, the guru of the lady who uh, waited for Lord Rama, R Lord Rama and Lakshman, right? Uh, uh, it starts with an S. Yeah. Sabra. Sabra, yeah. Her, her, her guru's name was, it's not Mundak, it was uh, Mandak or something like that. Matang, Mat Matanga, yeah, Muni, Matanga. Yeah, so you, sometimes I get them mixed up. Yeah. So Vidura became purely because the demigods are not pure devotees. Sure. Although they, they serve them. Some of them are. Like, yeah, Maharaj. Became pure devotees. Yeah. After. When he took birth as a son of. of um, Yesterday. Yesterday. But before that, when he was in, in normal, he was in his post, before being cursed, it was, it was just like normal demigod. He was a spirit boy that time. Yeah. He was. He wasn't a pure devotee. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. No, he has, he's got information. No, demigods have information of Krishna. But they have a desire to dominate still. So they're given these big positions like Brahma and so forth. But here's an example of someone who becomes a pure devotee. Go ahead. You know, that's a question. Oh, okay. But it was, a, it was formerly, it was a pure devotee. It became pure devotee after, after this past time. Yeah. Being born in a. Whatever yeah. Because that's the yeah, association of pure devotion. So that, that's the theme also of the Bhagavatamrita, how someone in spiritual life is uh, is uh, progressive. From any position, one can progress if they have the right association. Yeah. I like Jeva Dharma. Jeva Dharma said that. Especially for the only one human. Human faces, only one. The Jiva Dharma says that? Yeah. Uh, well, that's okay. Yeah, so, yeah, well, you might say. He said it also great because he said, actually, only the difference is level of consciousness among human beings. But the only one race, human race. Yeah. The only one human race. And the difference is according to consciousness. Uh, yeah, consciousness. Uh, the, the mode of nature. Brahmin, something. Like 
So okay. I mean, in like you have, we have the four van Nuys Schumann. No, but that when it mean? says there's 400,000 uh, yes, human. That's according to the level of consciousness. Yes. Whereas Darwinism says there's one, there's one species. Yes. What? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, but that's what Dr. Sen or Dr. Sen's son was obviously saying that Africans are, are not it's a different species. It's not it's not a human species. He's saying something like that. You know, it's uh <laughs> I mean, it's a theory. It's a completely speculative theory. It has no f foundation. And because of that, you know, you can't, I mean, Prabhupada was giving, uh, it was initiating uh, African devotees, right? And, and making them brahmanas, giving them brahman thread and everything. So uh, that, that was not accepted by these nonsense people like Dr. Sen's grandson. And he convinced <laughs> Chutananda, right? So Prabhupada wrote this whole letter to show him that's not true. Yeah. yeah, that's right, exactly. Because basically, like, follow, 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 follow. He's following Panchatriki Vidhi, Panchatratra, and he's following his Gurudev. And his Gurudev was very controversial, right? He did things that uh, many people, you know, he was, they were trying to kill him. They actually hired a guy to kill him. 25, gave him 25,000 rupees to kill him. He was a policeman in Vrindavan. He went privately and spoke to Bhakti Siddhanta. He said, you have to leave. They've given me money to kill you. I don't want to kill you. I know you're a genuine devotee. That's how heavy things were getting, you know, because of Bhakti Siddhanta. This this world, like, you know, normally people say they the women so, you know. Yeah. The Mormon church did not... They're not, the Mormon Church did not accept uh, African Americans until the 1960s. They thought they were not humans. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of that nonsense that's going on in history. And, and, but the nonsense starts in India. Oh, India is the home of nonsense. <laughs> Well, his father was not really a sutra, but anyway, yeah. 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 Well, he was sudra in this sense that he became friends with uh, Dur Duryodhan, and that uh, he participated in uh, you know nefarious activities. Like he didn't do anything to stop Draupadi from being stripped, and uh, he didn't he didn't stop Duryodhan from trying to kill the Pandavas, and uh, he fought in the war against the, uh, his own brothers, right? Of course, he didn't know they were his brothers at that time. But, he, 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 you know, he, he did this because of loyalty to Duryodhana. So that, that shows you a very important point. If you support a bad person, even though you're a good person, you're going to you're gonna suffer and you're going to be punished because you support a bad person. Right? Yeah. There was a discussion there. Even though you're a good person. <laughs> yeah. There was a discussion during this, this kind of uh, this issue. Really? Yeah, it was online. I didn't get involved, but then uh, anybody having some conference is about it. Well, that's why I read this <laughs> letter to you. This has been addressed by Prabhupada himself, you know, and he gives all this ref all this shastric reference. You see, he went to all that trouble 
to clear this up. No, you had yeah, in Nairobi for sure. I mean, the Hindus rejected the, the blacks for a long time. They wouldn't let them in the temple. Yeah. Um, huh? Yeah, he also lied to his girl. Haribo, Ogoisa Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai.